the horror hour. Hello and welcome to the Horror Hour, the show where we discuss, debate and disagree on all things horror. I am your host, George, and today I am joined, of course, by our fellow host, Utaka. Utaka, hello. Hello. And today, myself and Utaka are going to be talking about our favourite thing. Well, I mean, I'm generalising because, I I mean, I think it's his favourite thing. We are going to be ranking the Scream franchise. Utaka, how do you feel? This is quite a big one for us to be doing today. How do you feel about it? Oh going to be fun it is going to be fun i'm looking forward to it so what we'll basically do is we'll hit our from from bottom to top from four down to one until we get to the main one we will break down what our ranking is and our reasons for that ranking and then we'll head on until we hit number one and if you stay to the end we're having a fun game of quotes that needs a better title i don't know Guess who? So we're going to do a, a, a fun trivia where basically we've both selected some quotes from across the Scream franchise and we're going to read them out to each other. And if we are true Scream fans, we will know what movie they are from. So everyone, we will get a point if you guess the movie correctly and you'll get a bonus point if you can guess who said it as well, which is very exciting. But right now we're going to start, of course, with the ranking so without further ado let's get into it Utaka. all right so my number four pick is actually the third one okay. so first off i i do need to say i love all the scream films i do um but this would be my least liked uh you know as per usual, Scream always kills off a character I love. And as soon as Parker Posey died, I was like, nope, I'm done. Because she added such a fun snark to it. And I loved seeing her and Gail go back and forth. Uh, but the whole idea that they were on the set of a new stab and uh, some of the cast was not the best. Like, I mean, actually, I was happy that Gina McCarthy died early because, you know. She's problematic, people. Mm. Um, it just wasn't my favorite. And for a, like a finale, even though it wrapped so many things up, I did love. And I loved the ending. And I thought it was great. But I can't say I it was one of my favorites. Well, I'm going to say snap there because my number four is also number three. Um, I've got a feeling we're probably going to have the same list. So, but this, still, that's fine. We maybe just very are in sync. So, Scream Three, as as Yutaka says, I very much enjoy this all of the screams, and I do. Scream Three does hold a special place in my heart because it it's just you know it's bad, but you've got to like enjoy it as well at the same time. <laughs> like it kind of just has a a charm to it, and I do think Parker Posey is probably my favorite thing about the film. Obviously we all know that there were a hell of a lot of rewrites to the original story because of, of stuff that happened in the real world. I'm, I still believe that some of those things might come back into play in the new scream. Let's see. But anyway, scream three. Yeah. It's, it just feels slightly disjointed compared to the first two. Mm -hmm. And I just think that for me, there is too much that I didn't, that just didn't do it for me. I agree. The whole being on set thing, it was like taking it to the next level of being meta, of course, which is fine. It's what all these films are about. But the the rushed sort of rewritten ending, the, the way that you could tell that originally some characters were all that were intended to be killers. They like, you know, there was seen, you could tell that that was going to happen and they obviously didn't go with that in the end. But 
Yeah, and I do you know what? I didn't actually dislike the killer in terms of the Roman. story of it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't dislike the, the story of that. I know some people were like, oh, it was stupid. But I think, like you say, it kind of wrapped up the three quite well mm-hmm. as a trilogy. But I do wish, and it's always my gripe, and I always post about this every time. I think it was, I think it was Hello Sydney um, on Twitter, I think posted it. Um, when she, when she, they say, oh, be careful, Sid, the killer. Do we, um, do we, Jesus. Um, Randy said the killer is always superhuman. And she says, no, he wasn't superhuman, do we? He wasn't superhuman at all. And then he gets up, proceeds to get up and go, rah, rah, rah. I really think considering the end that the part just before that, where they hold hands and they have this really, this moment where you realize this is a brother and sister who, you know, have just found each other and it's all, you know, through no fault of their own. I mean, Marine Prescott, like she got a lot to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> I know obviously in this one, they sort of touch on the whole. And I mean, that was an interesting element. Maybe, I mean, it was, probably ahead of its time to be honest the sexual assault storyline that kind of was undertone yeah. there so i understand that I, you know i'm not that was a, an element of the reason that you know she was the way she was towards the end but anyway sorry i'm digressing what i'm trying to say is that scene between those two i thought was really nice when they hold hands in the music i mean sydney's scene oh mark about it, it's gorgeous it's chef's kiss but then if, i just really wish that he hadn't have got up because i think it would have been more just it would have made more sense and felt more heartfelt that this he wasn't because both the other killers they they got up at, you know you got billy doing that but, and you got mickey doing and all that so i think this would have made uh, felt a bit more like wow that he didn't get back up because he was he wasn't superhuman he was a boy a scared boy who just wanted a family but so that's a, that's another that's one of my ravings. I'm like I kind of and the opening's terrible. It's so rubbish. And they then they got with they did all this stuff with all the different voice like the the having all the voice changes with the different people's voices was just too too far for me. So yeah, Scream Three for me is also my number four. So I think we both agree on that. Um, that it. It's I'm not, really shocked by that. It's not a bad say it's not a bad film, but it just has a lot of bits that I can't really forgive compared to the others. So yeah. That's me, and that's Yutaka. And with that, <laughs> Yutaka, this will be it. Now I will know when you give this answer if we've got the same. So Yutaka, what is your number three? Number two. We don't have the same list. Continue. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. <sighs> Number two. Uh, supposedly the sequel that's better than the first. I don't believe that. But, uh, and, you know, this film had so many good parts to it. What I just had issues with, though, I'm tired of one scene Sarah Michelle Geller die. Damn it even though it was a cool death. Um, I don't know. I just, and also Randy, I never got over that Randy died. That he was like my favorite character of all because I was like, I want to work in a video store. I want that to be me. I think he was kind of cute, you know, but um, I don't know. There was just something about it that I just, I when I saw it in theaters, I was like, okay, all right, I got it. Yeah, cool. And the whole, oh God, the whole defense at the end that the movies made me do it. I, I mean, I'm glad they called that out like that wasn't going to work. But it just, it was very, I don't know. I just didn't have fun with number two as much as everybody else did. I thought, uh, I loved the performances. Uh, you know, it sounds silly, but fucking, they should have killed Dewey in that one. We, uh, there was just some things that I was like, guys, you, you could have committed on some of these, but it's still great film. But I don't find myself going back and rewatching it as much. And to me, uh, the way I rank or love films is by how much, though, am I going to go back and just want to sit down and rewatch your film? That's not one of them, unfortunately. Okay. I mean, that's fair. All, 
all valid points. Mm -hmm. I did not go with that for my number three. My number three is Scream 4. I do enjoy Scream 4. However, I feel like it was made because the, the, the studio said, Wes, we want you to create another Scream film. And he was just like, okay. And it just kind of was like a last minute thing. Yeah. Uh, we, the, first of all, we need to talk about the filter that they used on that film because the way that film was filtered and shot was not the one. I know they were using that on quite a few films back in the like 2010s, like for horror films, but it's actually for a remix of it, but it was just not the one. It really looked bizarre. And I'm so looking forward to being able to see Scream 2022 within what it's supposed to look like. But Screen 4 for me, I do really enjoy. And I think that the, I, and it probably was the one I was most shocked about when it came to said killer. I remember being, yeah. in the cinema and being like, oh shit, wow. Because like that, I did not see that coming. Because my vibe going in was because we'd had the trilogy and we were being introduced. And obviously, that was the point. We were being introduced to Jill. And you're like, okay, this is the new Sydney. And mm-hmm. I was fully ready for Sydney to die in that film. Agreed, actually. And then it was like, oh, turn it on its head. And to be honest, I would have, I kind of wish they had, like you said about committing to things. I think it would have been really interesting to have had Jill live and to be living this fa- in the next film and to be living like this famous life, blah, blah, all she wants. And then having like, I know what you did last summer vibes where <laughs> somebody knows that she's the killer. And then you could have had like them, you know. No, shut up. Stop. Yes, yes. And uh, you, they, no. you could have had a really cool like fight scene between the two killers. And like, anyway. No, George, stop. No, absolutely not. That's ridiculous. No, it's. It's not as ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, guys. And let us know in the <laughs> comments below if you'd have liked to see Scream 5 if it had been Jill. I know what you did last summer. But anyway, Scream 4, I quite enjoyed the cast overall. Um, obviously, Justice for Kirby. Will she be back? I don't know. I'm, I'd am i like to think so, but I just don't want to hold... I don't know. Hope. Yeah, think, no, yeah. I'm with you. Justice for Kirby. Absolutely. Yeah. But she's brilliant. But yeah, I loved her. But yeah, there was just parts of it that didn't like the 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 original cast. It felt like the Star Wars remakes were like severely underutilized or were not used in the correct way. They were just kind of there. Yeah. And I think. Agreed. This is something that I'll be interested to see how Scream 2022 fares with how they use the. The, the original characters and the new cast and how that sort of mangles into one. I don't feel like they did it successfully in Scream 4. Yeah. But I still really enjoy it. And I do enjoy one of my like favourite quotes, um, which isn't in my quote thing. Oh, I hope it's not in your quote thing, though. Now I say, <laughs> but I'll say it anyway. And if it is, you have to cross off. But one of my favourite quotes is, um, you just won't die, will you? Who are you? Michael fucking Myers, which is um, which I love. It's just such a cool quote. But I, I just enjoyed Jill. I thought she was really good. And Emma Roberts did a really good job in that sense. But yeah, it just, again, it felt like it was, it was the film was forced to be created. Um, well, I mean, it went through production hell. Yeah. So I would put that as, as my number three. Because mm. I do, I would, I do probably watch it more than Scream 3. But, yeah. Yeah. So, wow, guys. So let me tell you why number four is my second pick. Yes. A one, because I can watch that over and over. Because Jill is batshit insane and I love every minute of it. Um, I do enjoy the young cast and I think it's really... It was really nice to see um, because I too thought they were going to kind of move towards a new generation because it was supposed to be a new trilogy until it, well, it bombed Mm -hmm. at the box office. Uh, And I think there are just certain things that I really liked because it was kind of updated. It was modern, you know, it was still being meta and, you know, uh, you know, coming with, or uh, what's that phrase? Like, 
I don't know the phrase. I don't either. Moving with the times, coming moving with the with times. The times yeah, yeah, moving yeah. with the times. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I literally just woke up out of bed. It he uses that excuse me. every week. He uses that excuse every week. Um. Yeah, no, it's it's true, though, this time. <laughs> like, it was like eight in the morning. And I thought we were filming at like 11 my time. I lied to him. He did. So, but I also, um, a couple of things. I love some good gory kills and four delivers on that. Um, the only, well, I will say, I hate that they didn't use like a prop knife and they used a CG knife. Yeah. That was a little, ugh. Because the scenes uh, where you, well, the you scene where, tell. well, there's the scene where he's, stabs um or she stabs uh gail and there's no blade (laughs) (laughs) because they forgot to add the cgi in (laughs) so so it's you know but i still i I really i just have fun watching it um because this is sad i don't put a lot of thought into that one Mm -hmm. but it's just such a fun ride and honestly hayden panettiere as kirby was phenomenal i was so upset i truly hope somehow she's alive i don't i I have hope but um, i don't think so um but god she was awesome and i was like i could i really actually i wanted her to kind of i wanted her to continue with the series i just thought she did a great job Mm -hmm. but then i also have to say jill's crazy scene where she goes absolute bonkers just gets me giddy every time. Yeah. And I remember sitting in the theaters and like, this bitch is nuts. It was crazy. <sighs> so, and yeah, it, it went through development hell. I know even they weren't really as proud of it. And then when it got released, it really didn't get the marketing it deserved. It bombed and it pretty much killed the series <laughs> until now. And it sucks because we could have had more Wes. So that breaks my heart a little, but I do enjoy this film. Um, I really did. I just, it's one I can watch surprisingly over and over. I know I'm, I'm terrible. I have no taste. I will allow you to have this on this occasion because it's scream. It's still scream. So it's okay. Well, then I'll move into my number two, which is of course, Scream 2. I mean, it could have been Scream. Imagine that. Imagine the plot twist if I'd have said it was Scream. Yutaka would have come through that screen and murdered I me. would have beat your fucking ass. But no, it is, you're safe. It is Scream 2. I really enjoy Scream 2, like, a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's, well, the the best out of all of the sequels. Obviously, that's why it's my number two. Wow. Okay. I just think it, plays well it it leads on well from the first film scream 3 got a bit like weird and like ghosts of more impressed on things and you went and then scream 4 Uh, i hated that yeah it wasn't so for me scream 2 i thought was a really good um sequel to the the original i I like the setting i like the university i like that we sort of moved on i it was nice to have obviously to see the, the characters again and have them you know picking up a few years later and I really enjoy the killers. Now, I know everyone's always a bit like, oh, well, it's not. They kind of, you know, put middle finger up to you because you they Mickey disappears for 45 minutes of the film. So you, you can never <laughs> right. really think that it's him. But, and, and, but I think the plot twist of the Mrs. Loomis. Oh, Debbie Saw. I did like that. That Debbie was a good Salt plot twist. It was very, yeah. very good. I loved that. And I found, I also loved the scene when, Gail is hiding in through like the film classrooms and stuff and and all that. Oh, so I, the the what are those? The sound dampers, yeah, like the sound the... dampers and everything like that, and the and the, <sighs> the recording booths and all that was a lot of fun. I will tell you in the theaters, I do remember that part like put me on edge. Like I could feel my heart pumping during that. Um, so oof, okay, that that is a good that's a really good scene, yeah. So. And the opening, obviously, not as good as the f- first, but I think it's all it's the best opening since the first. Um, in yeah, terms of an opening I scene. would agree, and it's a lot of fun. And it was really interesting to do to, you know, they obviously they were like, okay, we could do another 
phone call situation but they want to do something different and I thought yeah I mean it would it would never happen in a UK cinema because we don't react like that to films we all just sit there so if somebody was stabbed we would know um even even in horror films we're not going Rah! like if Emily did that in the UK cinema they would be arrested so <laughs> I mean, I don't think it, that happens now yeah. anymore, but in the past, yes, people would go bonkers, bonkers for like a big film release, mm -hmm. especially, you know, and nothing to, I saw it with Harry Potter, I saw it with Star Wars, um, you know, the first Avengers, like people just, yeah, mm -hmm. now though, it is obviously, it's, it's more subdued, yeah. and that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But still a very good, uh, the opening scene is a lot of fun. It's really good. But so for me, that's probably what, that's my number two. And I also really like, I, I love Timothy Oliphant. I think he's hilarious and funny. And he, he he's also a really good actor. And his scene, it was so good. And I think he, to me, is probably one of, I really, as a killer, probably, and this, I know people are going to hate me, the best. And I'm going to tell you why right now, because he is, genuinely just insane he's genuinely just a mass murderer billy loomis was driven to it because of um his mother leaving Stu was but you can do that you can take it off i'm gonna keep talking billy loomis and Stu are great but they are i think mickey holds a better torch he is the only one who is actually um, a mass murderer that just is insane as I said Billy was driven to it Stu was pushed to it you know and again Roman was pushed to it because of his like abandonment and Jill was pushed to it because of the fame whereas Mickey's just like I just want to kill people so yeah I'm just waiting for you Taka to come back in with the headphones so on that note Yutaka what's your number one film Oh, oh, yes, of course. Sorry. <laughs> Can't believe you said that. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But teach their own. I think, obviously, both of ours. So, Scream. Yeah. Is the original. Mm -hmm. You don't fuck with the original. No. Um, Scream, to me, was one of the first films. I, mean, I, I By that time, I had already loved horror. By, but it was the first film in a very long time that I saw in cinemas when it came out that actually scared the living shit out of me. Um, because one, it, it was, there was a killer, you know, there were so many things like looking at that, I'm like, that could happen. Mm -hmm. And so there was that, but I love the dialogue. It was very witty. It was, you know, you got a fresh new cast who really sold it. And I love the final set piece, the little plot twist. There was just so much about that movie that I truly loved. And I still, to this day, it was just a moment just watching it on screen. And if not for anything to this day, and I will always say it, it is the best, has the best opener of a horror film. I mean, anything. Drew Barrymore. Yeah, a Drew, well, I don't know. About, yeah, maybe actually, hmm. oh, sure. <laughs> uh, but Drew Barrymore's performance and that just sequence was absolutely terrifying i think i was like 12 or 13 when i saw that and i was on the edge of my fucking seat like gripping i was like oh my god oh my god uh, it was incredible and it like it shocked everybody people mm -hmm. were you know i can tell you a, a lot of the gays were pissed i knew one who's like i walked out and asked for my money back i'm like mm, calm down mary you know like i was like but she died we got still got you know, all this other cast, so whatevs. But it was just so good. That opening, it just holds up. And I, you know, it just, I love that movie. Seeing it in theaters, if you ever get the chance, I always say do it. It is, it's amazing to see on the big screen. I, it's just, it holds a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Because I remember how terrified I was also because I love Wes Craven. And it was just so nice to see that yet again, this man came in and turned the horror industry on its head mm -hmm. because they're like, what is this? 
a clever well and there were still good slashes before but unfortunately you know they're just coming through all the friday the 13th and the, even the nightmare on elm street sequels and halloween sequels but this everyone was like whoa and it was a hit and obviously it's you know spawned so much more mm-hmm there we go. Well, yeah, as I say, I'm the same as you, Saka. It's my favourite of them all. And of course, if you watched our favourite scary movies podcast, which if you didn't, you can go and check out now. Spoiler alert, it's my favourite <laughs> horror movie of all time. So it's not a surprise that it's number one on this list. But yeah, I I just love that film, as you say. You know, I don't want to like repeat everything that Yutaka said, but obviously it's a lot in the same vein. You know, the opening was just fantastic. It was just like you say, you're so captivated by it. Obviously, I didn't get to see it in the cinema, but still, even just at home, you kind of I wish that I was old enough to have gone to see it in the cinema. But you can get everyone by this time that comes this everyone's probably a lot of people will have seen the 25th anniversary edition in the cinema. So that will be cool. I'm not going because I'm avoiding the trailer, so we can react to it. For you guys, we are yeah. missing this for you. I'll watch it on the day. I'll like watch the scream at this next weekend, this weekend. Um, like when when I would go and see it in the cinema. But yeah, so for me, it's it's just it's so good. I mean, Nev Campbell just proves like she's just so good. I mean, she's good in all of them, but this one, you know, there's that air of not like amateur, but you know, like I'm not talking about I'm talking about Sydney here, not I'm talking about. But this sort of, you know, naive young girl who's sort of just coming into her own. And she's had so much, you know, stuff happen to her in her past, but she just manages to get through it all. And, you know, I think it's the strong, it's definitely the strongest cast overall. Agreed. Such, such a strong cast, um, mm-hmm. you know, with everybody. And two great killers and they're fantastic. And two, you know, and the polar opposites are each other as well, which was, was really funny. It, so, yeah, it just it really does just hold up well. And I think it will continue to hold up well for forever because it's just, it's, it's so well written. The soundtrack is brilliant. The cast are fantastic. The directing is amazing. So you can't really, it's, and no matter how many times you watch that intro, like you're still like, like, Oh my God, this is so cool. Like it's, you just feel excited about it or scared. And yeah. So it's the same as you tag it. I just think it's amazing. And I love it. And I will always love it. And let's see. I think what will be interesting now is, of course, in January, we have Scream 2022 coming out. And we'll have to maybe revisit this list. Of course, when we do our, we'll be doing a review, of course, of Scream 2022. Maybe we'll have to revisit the list to see where Scream. I can't keep have to call it Scream 2022 because it's not Scream 5. Scream 2022 comes into that list and that'll be very interesting to see do you think it will be number two i hope i I really do i have i love radio silence and i have a lot of faith in them Mm -hmm. this cast is incredible it's great to see everyone come back i i feel like they'll honor wes's legacy and yeah I'm, I'm really excited and I truly hope that it's a great film. I'm nervous for the trailer just because, you know, they said it's going to, it's still, regardless, they have to be careful because it'll give things away. So I'm curious to what they'll do, but uh, it sounds like it's going to be the most meta, which I'm okay with too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited. I, I cannot wait. So I hope so. We will see. I don't think anything's going to ever top screen though for me in terms of the series mm-hmm. that it, and part of that is the emotional experience of seeing it in theaters and just how overwhelmed I was as watching it and mm-hmm. like that's that's part of why it means so much to me um, but can I plug something then because this is why it's a little controversial that I said this is better than the sequel sure plug away So I got to interview Kurt Sienga, who is an executive producer and uh, showrunner on Eli Ross' History of Horror that is on AMC Friday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. And, well, the first episode is about sequels that don't suck. And Scream is on there. (laughs) And I, being a fool, let him know that I thought Scream was better than Scream 2. Yep, that's me, guys. But I had to say it. That was my opinion. But I still love that they showed Wes so much love Mm -hmm. for that. 
So I just, and that interview will be dropping soon. There you go. So keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for it for sure. Well, on that note, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be playing a little trivia game of guessing the screen quotes. Who's who? I don't know what we're going to call it. It's just a game. We're playing a game, guys. All right. So see you in a minute. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Horror Hour TV. And we are back. So without further ado, let's just get into it. We're going to play a little trivia game. So myself and Yutaka have both selected five quotes each. And basically we're going to take it in turns to guess what movie the quote is from for one point and for a bonus point, who said the quote? Okay. So, Yutaka, I think maybe I'll start. Yeah. Okay. So, your first quote is, I think you'll know this one. I hope. I'm bad with movie quotes, guys. It's true. (laughs) Dead serious. It's so sad. Here we go. Okay. I'll wait for you to finish your Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, no, because you it's, you know, okay. Okay, here we go. And to make sure that I say it correctly, because I don't want to misquote it, but I shouldn't do, because I do know I wrote all these from my head. He does. It's pretty impressive. Okay. $50. What are you, a reporter for Woodsboro High? Uh, Jennifer from Scream 3. Ding, ding. There's two points to you, Taka, there. Congratulations. Yes, that was Jennifer in the basement scene of Scream 3. There we go. Two points. See how easy this game is? Let's see if I can do the same. You, Taka, give me my number one. Okay. Come on, Mr. Ghostface. Whisper to me. Aren't you supposed to ask me a question? (laughs) That was... I feel like this is going to sound like Cluedo. That was... Tatum in the garage in Scream. Cut. Nope. He's canceled. Absolutely not. I'm going to tell you what that quote is because I know that one. I just gave you a quote from Kirby Reed. Oh, fuck. (laughs) And Tatum is, no, Mr. Ghost. Yeah, it's because I want to be in the sequel. sequel. Oh, my God. Not me being so. Cancelled. Sure. sure about that quote as well. I was like, let me tell you. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> I'm hungover, guys. I'm going to blame it on the alcohol. He always is. It's George. All right. Okay. Moving on, then. Let me go to your number two, which is. It's also predictable that there's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. That is... Can you say it one more time? It's also predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. Is that Sydney in Scream? Uh-uh. Oh, is it? Oh, no. Is that mm. Casey? No. Oh, who is it? Oh, it's Anna Paquin, aka Rachel from Scream 4. It's also predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. <gasps> Do you see that coming? Oh, yeah. All that right. Because I knew that's from Stab 7. Get it. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're both. Oh, no, I still haven't got one. <laughs> yeah. So I need to get this one so we can be on par. Okay. All right. Give me my number two. Okay. All right. All right. All right. The quote is... Yeah. My life. That is Detective Kincaid in Scream 3. When Sydney asks, what's your favorite, what's the favorite scary movie? Good for you. Okay, I've redeemed myself, guys. I've redeemed myself. I don't know. That still shocks the hell out of me. But continue. Okay. Right. (laughs) Your number three 
is okay. I was going to say who it was then. <clears throat> that, would been, yeah, that would have been a bit of a giveaway. Okay, your number three is why do you always answer a question with a question? Why do you always answer a question with a question? Oh God, it's one of the killer's phone calls. Oh, no, 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 no. It's between Dewey and Gail. And I'm going to say Gail and Scream. Uh-uh. Oh. Incorrect. Told you guys, I'm really bad with movie quotes. <laughs> so the correct answer is CC in Scream 2. Uh, Why do you always answer a question with a question? I need to mark off the one quote I was going to give because it was one of hers. Well, you didn't have to. Oh, no. As soon as I... I, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Okay. All right. I see. Okay. Um, My number three. All right. Stupid people go back. Smart people run. We're smart people, so we should get the fuck out of here. Oh, stupid people run. We're smart. Stupid people. Sorry, say it one more time. Stupid people go back. Smart people run. We're smart people, so we should get the fuck out of here. And I'm going to open it. It's a Diet Pepsi, guys. I'm so sorry. We're not sponsored. I just don't want you to think I'm opening a beer at 11 a.m. I know. Smart people. Mm-hmm. We should get the fuck out of here. I can see it. It's coming to me. Mm-hmm. Is it... I don't know if it is. Uh, is it Haley in Scream 2? Fuck you, yes. <gasps> oh, I was I, I thought for a second it might have been Jennifer from Scream 3, but it was okay, thank God. That's when they come out of the car and she's like, wait, I gotta find out who it is. And you're like, Sydney, you're taking the piss. He really knows his quotes, people. Well, apart from the first one. <laughs> All right, your turn. Okay. I think you'll know this one, but it's just such a I just it's such a fun quote. Um, could you please explain to Betty Crocker that I have every right to be here? Could you please explain to Betty Crocker that I have every right to be here? Oh, <laughs> that's Gail and Scream Four because yeah. it's the, the whole lemon square. The lemon squares. <laughs> the lemon squares taste like ass. Yes. <laughs> So currently we're on what? You've got four points mm-hmm. and I've got six. Yeah. 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 Okay. So give me my number four. I'm thinking because there are only two. Okay. All right. Um, let's go with. Oh, yeah, here we go. If they're looking for Maureen Roberts, they're never going to find her. Rena Reynolds, they will. Bianca Burnett, Scream 3. Yes. Fucking hate you. <laughs> Bravo. And can we also talk about just a little shout out to Carrie Fisher, who wrote that scene herself? She's an icon. She's amazing. Because one of my, I was going to use the quote, um, I was almost Princess Leia, you know. I was this <laughs> close. So who gets it? The one who sleeps with George <laughs> Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's really no way I can win now. There We're isn't. only doing... F- no, George, you won. But let's do... Let's just finish the last quote. quote. So, yeah, oh, yeah. All right, all right. And I'll give you a chance to win this one. Oh, okay. Because, well, to win this thing. <clears throat> I, I do to- like that idea. Are you ready? Go take a deep mm-hmm. breath. <sighs> Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, Amityville Horror, uh, Last House on the Left, Friday the 13th, The Nightmare on Elm Street, My Bloody Valentine, When the Stranger Calls, Prom Night, Black Christmas, House of Wax, The Fog, Piranha. 
It's one of those, right? Right? I couldn't resist, <laughs> sorry. No, it's a, no, I love it. Kirby Reed, Scream 4. Yes. She's, a, she's an icon as well. She is. Ugh. She is. Right, go on then. Give me one final hurrah. Let's see if I can do this and redeem myself from the first one. Okay, here we go. One generation's tragedy is the next one's joke. Here we scream for. <laughs> I'm so pissed. I'm, but I'm so pissed at myself that I I that for, I got that first one wrong because I would I just I was too I was being too cocky, and again mm-hmm. I was just thinking of it was the way you, it was the whole like are you supposed to whisper like the whole like that element of it just put me off. So I apologize to everybody, but. I, we would like to know in the comments below, how many of those did you get right yourselves? Did you guess them all correctly? Were there any you didn't know? Did we trip you up at all? Let us know in the comments below. And on that note, that is the end of our episode. And we want to say thank you very much for joining us. As usual, Yusaka, thank you very much for being here. As always, it's a pleasure. I've had a lot of fun. This is one of our, I say, was an episode that we talked, which we knew was going to be up there at one point. And so I'm glad that we finally got to do it. Don't forget, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can hit that notification bell so you never miss anything. As soon as a video is up, it goes bing bong. It doesn't do that, but it does basically. You can hit like to help and comment as well. As I say, comment, let us know what your favorite ratings of the Scream films are. And if you've got any of those quotes right, or what are your favorite quotes from the Scream series as well. Don't forget, we've also got merch, which you can find at redbubble slash shop slash the horror hour of course the link will be in the description below and if you are listening on the podcast as well as i say make sure you head over to the youtube channel because sometimes we have videos on there including trailer reactions that aren't of course on the actual podcast so you don't want to miss some of the extra tidbits that come your way and next week is exciting because next week will be our review of halloween kills so we shall see the jury's still out on it let's see what happens but that's for next week and of course there will also be lots of other videos and content throughout the week as well but that is it from us so have a wonderful rest of your day wonderful rest of your week and we will see you next time bye guys bye you have been listening to the horror hour See you next time.